you asked me what happened the day before I met Anya, I wouldn't be able to come up with an answer. The truth is, I don't even think I knew Anya before then. All I remember is that I was taking photos of the Milky Way one minute and waking up next to her in a villa in the middle of nowhere the next. Hi, I'm Dane, and I got abducted and woke up next to the perfect girlfriend. But before I tell you my story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell icon to show your support for me. So, I was out in the desert, taking photos of the night sky, when I felt something hit me on the side of my head. I passed out immediately. When I woke up, bright white lights greeted me. When I looked around, I saw that I was in an immaculately white room filled with blinding fluorescent lights. And then, I noticed her. Anya was sleeping so peacefully beside me. Her face was so beautiful. And so was everything about her. It was as if she'd leapt out of a magazine cover. She stirred in her sleep, and her eyes fluttered open as gracefully as a butterfly's wings. And when she looked at me with a smile on her face, I knew I just had to ask her out. Unfortunately, there were more pressing matters at the time. Who... Who are you? I asked her. She smiled a sweet smile as she looked up at me, wiping the sleep from her eyes. Then she giggled. Anya, your girlfriend, silly, she said. Oh, n nice to meet you, Aunt. Girlfriend? I exclaimed. What insane situation did the universe drop on my lap now? I know I said I wanted to ask her out, but to suddenly wake up being some stranger's girlfriend? A steaming hot stranger, yeah, but a stranger nonetheless. What if she was a psycho? It must be a prank. Right? This is a dream. Right? I slapped myself three times in an attempt to wake myself up, but all it resulted in was a stinging cheek and Anya's continued giggling. What are you doing? She asked. Oh, <laughs> nothing. I, uh, I was just... It's unbelievable. Just trying to see if I'm in a dream right now, I replied. Anya let out a tinkling laugh, and then she cooed. Aw, that's so sweet. This isn't a dream, baby. I'm your girlfriend, and we'll be together forever. Why did I feel like that was more a prison sentence than a dream come true? It seemed like Anya was pretty convinced she was my girlfriend, and so I began to believe it too. What if she really was telling the truth? Maybe the hit on the head I received gave me some sort of weird amnesia, where I only forgot about one specific thing. Because I could definitely still remember the rest of my life. The only thing that didn't fit in with my memories was the notion that I had a girlfriend. As far as I could remember, I'd been single for at least three years. That day, Anya and I spent the whole day indoors. It seemed like there was a lot to explore in the house and I busied myself with getting to know the villa that was supposed to be ours. I have to confess, I've never seen that house in my life. But Anya spoke and acted as if we'd lived there for quite a while. I had to keep up with the information that I had lived there with Anya for the past three years. So, I made a conscious effort to get to know the place inside and out. The villa was actually pretty sweet. If I had to guess, it would have cost a pretty penny. The first floor was called wall to wall in the most amazing glass windows. They stretched from floor to ceiling and opened up to some pretty breathtaking scenery. In the middle of the house, there was a cherry tree growing. There was a movie room, a gaming room, and an indoor pool. I was mostly excited for the gaming room. But the sad thing was, there was not one device in the house with working internet. Even my phone had no signal. It made sense because we were essentially in the middle of nowhere. When I looked out, all I could see was a lush, sprawling garden surrounded by desert. In the distance, the horizon was dominated by snow-capped mountains, and for miles and miles there seemed to be no evidence of any towns nearby. Anya was sweet. She was basically the perfect girlfriend. She was always kind and patient. She was funny. She was beautiful. She cooked really well. And she always did her best to make me feel comfortable whenever the situation I found myself in made me feel uneasy. 
I tried my best to hide the fact that I still had no idea who she was, though. The best thing about Anya was that she loved gaming with me. We would spend hours upon hours just cooped up in the game room, player one and player two, breezing through games we both enjoyed. Sometimes, she would just suddenly leave the room, and when she came back, she'd appear with homemade snacks in tow. And when she kissed me, it felt electric. It felt like I'd known her forever. But somehow, something still didn't sit right with me. It all felt paper thin. Everything did. It felt fake. Manufactured. I felt like despite the amount of fun I was having living with Anya in that villa, it all still felt wrong. And I knew I had to find answers. Sometimes, I would excuse myself and just wander around the house. I would look for clues, hidden cameras, anything. Anything that made sense. Anything that fit into the reality that I knew from before I woke up in that villa. But I never found anything. It was at the end of the first week that I decided it was probably not some sort of prank show. I doubt any prank would last more than a few hours. I guess I just wanted to believe so badly that it was some contrived scenario. So I held on to that possibility. Don't get me wrong. Things were peachy. Anya was amazing. The house was incredible. Everything was perfect. But too perfect, maybe. If that sort of thing even existed. Things just didn't sit right. Like somehow in the back of my head... A tiny voice was screaming, RUN! One day, as Anya and I were having dinner together, I asked her to pass the salad. She smiled and said, Of course, baby. And as she reached for the salad bowl and handed it to me, a tear slid down her cheeks. I froze and said, Are you alright, babe? Me? I'm wonderful, baby. Why'd you ask? She said, It's just... Uh, there's a... You're crying, I replied. Anya's perfect face showed surprise. And then, she searched her cheeks for the tear. When she found it, she turned a bright shade of pink and said, embarrassed, Oh! Oh, my! This, I... I'm sorry. I'm sure it's nothing. My eyes are probably just tired. I, I'm fine. Honestly, I, I promise. More tears began to flow, and I wiped it for her. She then suddenly stood and excused herself from the table. She rushed into our room and shut the door. Something was wrong. Something was definitely wrong, and what I did next was something I am still extremely ashamed of. I was a coward. But you have to understand, I didn't know if Anya was who she said she was. And I was afraid she was something more sinister than she made herself out to be. I ran. I ran out of the villa through the garden and into the endless darkness of the desert. All I had as light were the stars. The moon was absent that night. I kicked myself for never learning how to navigate using the night sky. I didn't care what direction I was going. I just knew I had to put as much distance between myself and that house. If I were to die in that desert, I decided it was a better fate than whatever truly waited for me in that villa. As I ran... All the memories I had from that moment I met Anya rushed back to me. Small things that I ignored or did not think about before crept up to the surface. The vacant look in Anya's eyes. The noises I heard in the dead of the night. The voices I heard even when I slept. The fact that I would wake up with things not being where we left them. At first, I thought I was imagining these things. I thought I was just being paranoid. But that night... Everything just clicked. All the things I was afraid of finally made sense. I didn't know what I'd found myself in. But it was definitely messed up. And I had nothing to do with it. I just wanted to get back to my real life. And that night, I listened to the tiny voice in my head that told me to bolt. I ran up a dune. I must have been running for at least five minutes. But when I crested that dune, relief washed over me. In the distance, I saw a cluster of lights. Ugh! House! I exclaimed to the empty desert. But no sooner had I taken another step than I fell over and lost consciousness. When I woke up again, it was because I felt someone stroking my hair. I blinked twice, 
and then covered my eyes with my hands for the blinding light that greeted me. When my eyes finally adjusted to the sterile fluorescent lights, I saw Anya's face. She was playing with my hair and smiling down at me. If she didn't look the way she did, I would have found it creepy how close her face was to mine and how wide her eyes were. I specifically remember having run away, I thought, but I had to grit my teeth and just accept that I was unsuccessful. Was she the one keeping me here? Was someone else? Are we being watched? I smiled as sincerely as I could manage. And then, I kissed her. Good morning, babe. We had breakfast together, and all I could think of was that I had to get away. We worked on the garden together, and all I could think of was that I had to escape. I then made Anya a pitcher of the iced tea that she loved so that we could sit on our porch and watch the tumbleweeds roll by. And all I could think of was how I could save myself from that nightmarish situation. Things were getting worse. Every time Anya smiled at me, I would only notice the blank expression in her eyes. It looked as if she'd died inside. And her tears would come more often. Sometimes, I would catch her full-on weeping while she smiled at me. Her eyes wide. But what really creeped me out beyond anything else that happened that night, I decided to save Anya. We were playing a co-op game in the game room that night, and my mind was so preoccupied with thoughts of how I could get myself out of there, I didn't even notice her stand up. She was moving in weird, jerky motions, and then suddenly, she turned to me and let out the most anguished, horrifying scream I'd ever heard. Help! Help! Help me! I'm still in here. Please, Dane. Please. Please help me. Get us out of here. Dane. Please! And as if none of the last few seconds ever happened, Anya brushed her dress straight and went back to playing the game.